chance to give you my all. I was there whenever you just had the call. In high times we rise and the lows we fall. Now it's overflowing like a waterfall. Thankful for life every second. I know I do wrong with them living for the better. Calm is a bitch. Give myself a story back. I'm asking you. Tell me now, do you believe me? What is going on guys? Victor here, back with day two from the Bahamas. I am fired up. We caught a bunch of mahis this morning. We got two big yellow fins, which you guys already saw in the first video. Now we're out here. It's kind of like that middle of the day lull and all these tuna are staying really, really deep. They'll come up, we'll see the birds working them and you'll see them boiling and busting and then they go back down. So we're having a hard time getting bites. So we're gonna try to get on these tuna. I'll see you guys out there. Oh, oh no! so sick. Don't wheel you. Big mahis, big mahis. Right there. Right in front of us. Mike's got a stud on right there. He's on you, he's on you, he's on you. Bro, I twitch it, twitch it. Jesus Christ. Watch out, I'm up here in the box, guys. Good joke, I'm fired. What happened? Oh no, 20 times. I hit it like 20 times. I cashed it down. You got a nice one. I'm not gassing that one. Is it a big one, Mike? Mike, how big is that one? Probably 30. 30 pounder? Mike's yeah. 30. Oh, awesome. They swam so slow, so Any sluggish. EG's doing work on the palmy rods. <laughs> I, just, I just don't want another one to come and eat that bait. <laughs> oh my god. Perfect, big, perfect, perfect! <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh, oh my god! god. Oh, wait, he looked way smaller in the water. <laughs> Yo, the no nice bite. job, dude. Yeah. Wow. That's a 40 pounder, dog. Hold that thing up. I gotta get a picky that one face. that's lit up. <laughs> Stud fish, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah! What you got there? A nice mahi mahi. Fish so nice, they named it twice. <laughs> That's your biggest one, isn't it? Probably. Dude, that's a on stud. On a spinner. Thank God for the person who caught him before me, or hooked him, because he didn't fight as hard. Solid gaff work. It's a pretty Jeez. fish. Oh my God, I'm getting eaten by a giant. No, oh not. my God, big dolphin, big dolphin. Big dolphin. Oh, I'm on. I'm on right here. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, yeah. I got a good one on. There he goes. Yes. There he goes. There he goes. Yes. There he goes. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, there's another one up here. Yeah. You got him, Mike? Yeah. You got the baby. Is that you out there, Vic? Yeah. When we go to when we go to gas, we can get some of this. Mahi's everywhere. Nice mahi on guys, nice mahi. He might got a big one. We got another 20 plus pounder on. Out of nowhere, whenever you find something floating like this, it always pays to stay because mahis come out of nowhere. Oh my gosh, I thought your hook just pulled. This one's just maybe a little smaller than Mike's was. They fight kind of weird. They, they the brawl the for, no, he's deep, it's deep. Oh, there's a couple of Get the gap, Mike. I'm there. waiting, dude. Oh, 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 oh. So sick. This one you thought you were gaining on them, right? Right? Dude, they go down, they go up, they go down. You just can't turn them. Come on, baby. Come on, babe. Oh yeah, this is it. This, this is, is it. Get it, Mike. Get it, Mike. There you go. Yes. Yes. yes.
right. That Bring is my yeah. biggest mahi ever. So sick. Thank you, Mike, for the gap shot. Big old bull head. Stud on the live pilchard. All right. All right, here. Yeah, brother. Say it. Rock on, brother. Rock on, brother. Mike's got the first shark on of the day. Oh, oh it's huge. Water, in the garbage, but. I think it's going down, boy. I think it's tingling your line. Ron. Ron. Didn't jump. Yeah, Fucking tuna. That ain't no mahi. Yeah. So since it is the middle of the day and those tunas are staying deep, we decided to troll, try to cut off the birds, and we got Kenny hooked up in the corner right here on the uh, valley hoop. Yep. Didn't take long. We were only trolling for two minutes. That's it. There's so many birds too all around us. Just one giant, giant flock. Oh, oh, you got a monster, little Kenny. Little black. Flipper in, flipper in. Where there's little ones, there's big ones, right? It? Send it. That took point two five seconds. Mike, you think it's a tuna? Yeah. We literally just got baits out again. Yeah, it's bigger. It's bigger. Watch out, we're coming in! Yeah. Nick's homemade rig ballyhoo. The rig ballyhoo work, guys. It's not a hoax. I think I made that one. Hey, one for you! It's funny because Austin was saying back at home we want to catch black fins like this all the time We come over here and we complain because we're after those yellow fins But we're catching fish and uh, it sure beats sitting around wasting our trunks all day long. So got to do what's hot <laughs> We're on again Talk to you me what you got on? I don't know but they saw a big explosion. They said it's yeah. big Pulled a ton of drag too, didn't it? Why can't I? Yeah Oh, I got eaten, that's why. Oh, oh there it goes. Oh, damn. Oh, no. Oh, that's a good one. No, that's good. No, you got a good fish, bro. Uh, you didn't get shot. You might have a nice yellow one. one. Yeah. Uh, is it stopping at all? No. She might have gotten sharked, but I don't know. We're in gear the whole time. We're just a big yellow, dude. Yeah, it could be an elephant. They catch them trolling. Not that much weight on them. Yeah, a real one. No! Oh, uh, Oh, Brookie. Go that way. Brooke probably right lost a nice elephant or a bigger blackfin. We don't know, but pretty sure it got shark. Can I redeem yourself, Brooke? Redemption round. <laughs> Come on, Kenny. Get that beast. Yeah. You're good. Little guy. Mike hooked up on the JX. On the jig. You know that's a homemade vertical jig? Yep. The yellow? Yeah, shark. Uh. Oh yeah, Mike just hooked up to a tuna. <laughs> guys gotta check this out. You got a 50 oh, plus pounder on, don't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Green machine's doing work today. We we're about to leave this spot too. Dead baits down deep. Tuna? Sure. Yeah. 100 percent Oh yeah. I don't know, your thing just went off. In the mouth! How are you gonna do that? Here, you're, it's, it's saying. Nice, oh, right there. This one's gonna be the best eating one though. Uh, right? That was a good one, dude. Dude, hey. he's already white. Cannot believe that. Dude, you were so close. Right at the boat, right? Did right? you no, see the shark? Right underneath there. No, I, I felt, when he, I when he freaked out, that's what yeah, happened. Yeah, when you, I said, Show us what sharks do to your tunas. Mutilated, but That's look at the other good. side. Look at the other side. Look at those teeth marks. That's just unreal. Absurd. Those are some big teeth marks. I don't have that much 
We're gonna weigh this thing. This is the smaller of the two big dolphin we got. Mike got a stud. Brick think it's gonna weigh 26 pounds. I think it's gonna weigh 28. I won't undersell myself. Oh no, you were right. It's, it's like 26. exactly 26, 26 pounds. pounds. That's a good estimate, Rick. Hey, we'll round up. You never round down. It's a 30 pound dolphin. These fish are just, first of all, they're beautiful. They're really hard, powerful, powerful fighters. They got this just giant broad head and it's really hard to turn them. You know, they're really stubborn. And this just big broomstick tail. And honestly, one of the coolest looking fish we have here in Florida. Green, blue dots. I mean, they almost look, don't look real when you see them in the water. Starting over here by the peck fin. Take my knife, as I always do. Go up around here and follow to see where the head meat will end. Dolphin have a ton of meat all the way up in here. Glide down. All the way along that backbone. If you guys have ever seen a sailfish, well, dolphin have a pretty big, I guess you could say dorsal fin-like sail right there. And uh, that's another cool thing about them. This is probably one of the most favorite, popular fish you guys will ever see in a restaurant, mahi-mahi. Very world-renowned fish. They are worldwide in most tropical waters. You will catch them. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this guy in sections. Just like this, because this is just a really long, awkward fish. Yeah. Holy crap, this guy was full. I just cut his stomach open by accident. All right, we got a mid fillet break. I'm pretty sure this is a flying fish. It's got another, another flying fish. Two flying fish. A bunch of these little minnows. These things are very voracious. Uh, Dolphin are one of the fastest growing fish in the ocean. Oh, there's something big. Oh, there's my pilchard. That's the bait that I caught him on right there. Big old, just, these fish are kind of soft because we had so many fish uh, that we tried to pick, pack in this little cooler to bring back to Brooks' house. But look at that, just a big old slab of mahi. There we go. Got a nice two pieces of mahi. You got a bottom loin and a top loin. These things got a pretty nasty, big, thick backbone. I haven't flayed one in a very long time, but I've never flayed one this big, but they got a pretty mean backbone. See you later, buddy. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do with this guy is go ahead and skin him out. I completely forgot I should have cut this mahi down the middle. Probably would have been a lot easier to flay with that thick backbone, but I'm gonna take the uh, bloodline out right now. And for those of you who don't know, that's that line that runs right down the center of the fish, and it is very bloody. I'll show you guys in a second what it looks like. It's this dark stuff. Not the most appetizing stuff in the world. Very fishy, foul tasting. Now, a lot of people will rip the skin off of dolphin, which I have done myself. When you rip the skin off, you get this filament stuff. All of this white stringy stuff actually ends up being on the filet. It doesn't bother some people, but you know. All yeah. of this is a head meat. It looks good. That's enough food for one person if you chopped it off. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, mahi's been caught. It's been cleaned. It's time to cook them up. So what I'm gonna do for this recipe I'm gonna go non-traditional and make a pad thai mahi style dish. It's my first time making it. Um, and for the mahi itself, the way I'm gonna cook it is just very simply with some onion and garlic. And you saw those about one inch sections. First things first, I will tell you right now, if I had to do this recipe over again, I would cut them into half of that size. Um, and you guys will see later a bit later on in this video why. So I got some onions being chopped up. I have some into slices and then I have some being very finely diced and you'll see why also. Uh, our finely diced ones are going to be for our fish and then those longer strips is gonna be for the actual pad thai noodle style. We also are gonna use a lot of garlic in this recipe. So I probably have half of a whole head of garlic just prepping all my ingredients right now some scallions, 
This was, you know, one solid bunch of scallions into very little pieces. Go ahead and dice those guys up. And like I said, just prepping everything, get into my little glass bowls. And we're also gonna be using some snow peas and bean sprouts for this recipe. Very vibrant, fresh flavors, and pretty healthy. So uh, also for traditional pad thai, you gotta have peanuts in there. This is not a, your textbook pad thai. This is just kind of my take on it. Just my first time making it. So I got some peanuts, crushed them up. Also prepping those up, got them in my little glass bowl. Now for that bold flavor, I got roasted red chili paste. It's very strong stuff, so don't use too much. Some pure sesame oil and some fish, fish sauce. Once again, very, very strong. Got all my ingredients prepped. Now I'm gonna walk you guys through on the creation of the mahi pad thai. So first things first, olive oil went into the pan in this wok style pan. That is one thing I didn't wanna use. I actually thought I had peanut oil. That's what I intended to use, but I didn't have any. So I went with olive oil, put my onions in there and we are going to brown these up before we cook our fish in there to really give them some flavor as well as add our garlic in there a little bit later so it doesn't burn. Now I just cooked the fish directly with my onion and garlic, just added some salt in there as well. And um, this is why I tell you I wish I cut them into smaller pieces so they would have absorbed some more of the flavor so they weren't so big and overwhelming pieces of fish. But otherwise it was a great flavor and very simple. So then back into the same wok, we just added our onions, those longer strip style onions. Here are my rice noodles. This is gonna be my um, carb of choice for this dish. I went ahead and just boiled those. You guys aren't gonna see that on the screen. Added some sesame oil to our onion and garlic mix mixture, soy sauce, and as well as that red chili paste, which you're about to see right here. I only did about uh, a good sized tablespoon of this stuff in there. Could add a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on how strong you like that flavor. Um, really cooked that down about five, 10 minutes. Added my snow peas in. These only cook for about two, three minutes as well. Some sugar, get it a little bit sweet. And then add my rice noodles after they have been drained and cooked all the way through. Go ahead, mix it all up. And uh, you see that this is a very multi-step process. Add things in based on how fast they're gonna cook. Bean sprouts at the very end. You can add them in a little bit earlier. I just like them as fresh as possible. And our peanuts at the very end as well. Go ahead and mix this up. You don't have to put them in now. You can put them in as you serve your dish as well as some fresh scallion, but I just like a little bit in there and serve additional peanuts and scallions at the very end. Mix this guy all up, and this is just a very, very simple, um, really bold flavor dish. Go ahead and dish up the noodles, our fish, and then traditionally, I know you're supposed to serve it with lime, which was a phenomenal flavor to just sprinkle over your noodles. It really cuts through those really stronger uh, herbs in there. And so we got our lime, bean sprouts, scallion. I've added a little bit of red chili pepper flakes to mine because I like it a little bit spicier. And there you have it. Sprinkle some lime over it and you can't beat it. Thank you guys for watching. If you don't know, Brooke also has her own YouTube channel. Check that out. It will be in the description box below. She does plenty of catching cooks. And I'll be seeing all you guys, my land sharks, in that next video.